waiting for you and taking you to your classroom. In the meantime, I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Again, we will take the missions offering at the conclusion of this service. The sermon title is, Why Are We Doing This? Everybody say, why are we doing this? And that's an interesting question. Why do we do what we do? Why, why, does it make sense? Um, here's why we do it. First, let's start off with Acts chapter 2. Because, Pastor, why do you keep talking about Acts chapter 2? Why do you keep talking about Ephesians chapter 4? Why do you keep talking about Ephesians chapter 6? So if you will go with me. I, I've been preaching out of the ESV, which that is the NASB, but we need to switch to the ESV. So I'm going to go ahead and read it out of mine. Out of Acts chapter 2. So while I'm doing that, if you will go ahead and switch those to the verses I actually preach out of, that would be fantastic. Acts chapter 2, it says, when the day of Pentecost. Everybody said the day of Pentecost. Arrived. They were all together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared on each of them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Now, week after next, because next week is Kids Sunday, week after next, I'm going to focus on the other half of this where we're, going to, we're really going to focus in on the gift of tongues. We're going to focus in on, on the prayer language. We're going to focus in on receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit because I believe that is a thing that we need to focus on. Uh, we are a Pentecostal church and we are unashamed in being a Pentecostal church. But I want to focus on two things that are said in the first verse of chapter 2. Number one, it says they were all together. And then it says they were in one place. Now, doesn't it seem like it's repeating the same thing? If you're all together, aren't you in the same place? Well, the fact is the word here, all together, means unified. They were all on the same page. They were all in one accord as the King James says. So they were not only in the same place, but they shared the same heart. Now, if you forward to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, it talks about, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. It says, fear and awe fell on everyone, and they were able to do incredible signs and wonders. And then if you move on a few verses down, it says, and they had all things in common. And see, I think that is a missing element in God's church today, is as God's people, we don't have all things in common. We all have our own agendas. We all have our own political affiliations. We all have our own ideals. We all have our own things that we kind of bring to the table. And see, the thing is, all those things have to die at the altar. See, if we get to a place to where we dislike other people, before we even know their hearts, simply because they have a different political affiliation, a different skin color, a different language, a different citizenship, you name it. When we get to the place where we dislike people sight unseen, simply because they don't think like we do, they don't look like we do, we don't act like we do, we cannot accomplish Acts chapter 2. Because see, there were people from all over the known world in Jerusalem that day because it was the Feast of Pentecost. There were people from different nations. It was the most multi-ethnic gathering the church had seen to that point, or the, the Jews had seen to that point in a New Testament, New Covenant sense. So we've got to get to the place to where we are not only in one place. We've got that down. How many of you are in the same room with me? Raise your hand if you're in the same room with me. All right? So we got the one place part down. Now we've got to get the all together part down. To where even when my preferences aren't being met, because you know what? There are things that I don't prefer. I don't prefer pews. But you know what? When I go and gather at another church where they have pews, I don't think, well, God can't move here because they don't have my chairs. <laughs> right? And there may be some that have the other affinity. Um, and there are things that matter to people, and they matter deeply. And it's okay that they matter until we come together. Does that make sense? See, there are things that can matter deeply to you, you can care deeply about, but when we come together as God's people, all those things have to stop mattering. The only thing that matters is the mission at that point. And what is the mission? Why are we so focused on Acts chapter 2? Why are we so focused on becoming like a New Testament church? Let's go to Acts 1.8. I want to show you something in Acts 1.8. 
Acts 1.8 says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, no, number one, it says we're going to be witnesses to a diverse people. Right? Now see, next Sunday, we are going to have an opportunity to be witnesses to a diverse people. People that may not even know our language, people that may not even be citizens of our country. And we have to be at a place to where we are okay with that because they need one thing, and they need Jesus. They need salvation. Because see, that's the reason the Holy Ghost comes upon us. I love 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14. I love the fact that it says, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. And I love that it says that the spiritual gifts are built, are, are designed to edify and build up the body. To build us up and strengthen us. That's awesome. I love that I get goosebumps. I love that I feel his presence. I love that all these things happen, but none of that is the point. The point is found in Luke chapter 19, 10. If you'll put up there, Jesus said, the Son of Man came to seek and save that which is lost. Right. See, the Holy Spirit is to give us power to be witnesses so we will have authority and power to seek and save that which was lost. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus makes a pretty bold statement. In the beginning, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now stop there for a second. Go back. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So Jesus is saying, my sinless life, my death on the cross, my resurrection from the dead proves who I am. So therefore now I carry all authority. Now what's the thing he says next after that? Therefore go. So we are going in his authority. Now how do we go in his authority? That's where we wrap back to Acts chapter 2. That's where we wrap back to the power of the Holy Ghost. Folks, it is not by might, it is not by, by power, but it is by the Spirit of God that we are going to reach a generation and we are going to reach a people that are lost and dying. There are people out there right now that need this message of hope and there are so many people that they deny the Holy Spirit's work. They go through the motions, they speak the words, but there's no power backing their message. The gospel is the power of God according to Romans chapter 126, of salvation to the Jew first, but also the Gentile, which is a whole message all by itself. Folks, this is a Jewish message. If we don't like the fact that people unlike us are going to get saved, go and talk to the Jews. They, they lost their own Messiah to us. And there's coming a day where they're going to recognize who he is. And they're going to come back and we better be ready. But this is a beautiful message that Jesus left his people, that we have authority to reach the lost. That is our mission. That is why we are here. That is why we exist. That is why we worship. That is why we expect the power of God in our services because the gospel is included. Any gospel that does not include power is not the gospel. It transforms because it includes the Holy Spirit. That is why early church power is so important. We cannot reach the lost without the Holy Spirit's power. That's all it is, is words. If you preach a message that you don't believe yourself, or you don't sense the inner working of yourself, or you're not inspired by it yourself, if you're not excited about it yourself, if you're not willing to give a little time to it yourself, time in the word, time in that prayer closet, saying, oh God, shake me, break me, bend me, do whatever you have to do, but get me to a place where I can reach my coworker. Get me to a place where I can reach that person walking on the street. Get me to a place to where I have the power to speak your words with signs following. Because you all realize we don't just sing wonders are still what you do and miracles are still what you do because we think it's a cute song. We sing it because it contains truth. There is truth in that song that God still wants to do the miraculous in our lives. Because if you look at what happened in the early church, which Peter said, this gift is for you. For your children and to all whom the Lord your God shall call. 
So folks, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I feel the presence of God. It's wonderful. I'm thankful that every now and then I cry in the presence of God. I'm thankful that every now and then I feel those goosebumps and I get excited and I want to shout. But if it does not, let me just say this. Anything that only makes you feel good is just commotion. See, the gospel brings you to locomotion. To where you begin to move forward with the message. And you begin to get to a place where you can look at somebody and say, the hope that you are lacking is found in Jesus. And your words and your spirit and everything lines up in one thing. And they just sense that power and sincerity of what you're saying. It's more than just words on a page, words in a book. Folks, it is important. The gospel is the most important message that we can, and the thing is, why do you think there are so many organizations that will lean on the church for support? They'll utilize our food banks. They will utilize our resources. They will ask to use our transportation methods. They will want to use our facilities, but they want to squeeze out the message. See, it's because they know that message is foundation shaking. When you enter Jesus into the equation, it changes everything. And the early church knew that. When they decided to obey the words of Jesus and wait in that upper room until they received power, that changed everything. It shook a community. The reason that churches aren't shaking communities is because churches are leaving the gospel of Jesus Christ in this, for the sake of a social message that makes you feel good. And we've got to get to the place where the gospel of Jesus Christ is central in everything that we do. And it includes power. The gospel includes the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that is why we do what we do. Why do we do this? We do this because there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. So I guess some people would say, well, why aren't we seeing this? Why aren't the lost flooding our churches? Why aren't we seeing miracles? Why aren't we seeing, seeing healings? Why aren't we seeing all these things that we see in the scripture, and I would say that I addressed part of that earlier. We're in one place, but are we all together? Because see, the church is kind of like a pipe, a long pipe. And see, God is at one end of the pipe, and the lost are at the other end. And God pours his spirit through that pipe. But see, there are people that are dissatisfied with the way the pipe is. So they chop it. We'll cut this out. I don't like that part of the gospel. And then what happens to the water? It doesn't make it to the end. And then when we try to put it back together, it's all leaking out, right? And I, I, that's where we are today. We have the Baptist, we have the Methodists, we have the Pentecostals, and the Pentecostals can't get along. The Baptists can't even get along. They call the Baptists 57 varieties because there are so many different varieties of Baptists. The Assemblies of God can't get along. The Church of God in Christ can't get along. We're all fighting and fussing. And then we're doing the same thing inside the same building sometimes. Where we get to a place where we can't even agree on how we want to be. And it's a challenge. We've got to be one piece of pipe. And see, here, here's the thing. And I know this isn't duct tape, but... Whenever there's brokenness in us and you break that flow, when you repair it, Jesus comes in and he heals it. Where the water can flow through again and make it to its destination. Folks, we are not reaching the lost community because we're broken. If we're broken on the inside, we can't reach the broken on the outside. I believe today is going to be a day of healing. I believe today is going to be a day of restoration. But a second reason I think it isn't happening can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9, and Galatians 6, verse 9. But I want to start with this. See, Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God made it grow. 
So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one. Now here we are, back to that unity. We're all working together for one purpose. Some do one thing, some do another thing. Each will receive his wages according to his labor. So why aren't we seeing it happen in mass? I think, number one, we are planting seed. Jake, how long have we been doing street ministry? It hasn't been a year. So we're planting seed. But somebody else comes along and waters, and then God makes it grow. So see, one of the reasons we're not seeing is because we're planting. But I'm here to tell you, there's a young man here today that I believe you got a purpose and you got a reason and there was a reason you were standing in the square today, and I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but I see myself in you. I was a little bit younger than you when I got saved, and I was in a similar situation. And I'm here to tell you that God can bring you to a place to where he can use you in ways you can't imagine. And Savannah, I believe God has a plan for you as well. You are going to work together, and you all can shake this city. Yes. Amen. Because see, my goal here is to pull the purpose out of each and every one of you. You have heard me say that over and over again. Each of us has a purpose. Each of us has a place. Some plant, some water. We all do different things. But however, God brings the increase. And once God brings the increase, then look out, baby, here we go. So we are doing our part. And then God has his part. That's the part we cannot do. We cannot change a human heart. The only thing we can do is preach the gospel in power. The only thing we can do is go out into a lost, dying, and hurting world in the power of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts chapter 2, and say, thus saith the Lord. See, I'm telling you, there is a difference between walking around and saying, well, you know, Jesus, he did this, and he did that, and he was a great guy. And he died, but when you say, not only can I read the words to you, but I have a personal experience. Not only do I have a personal experience, but I have the living God living inside of me, speaking through me to you at this moment. And then all of a sudden, you get this inner witness in that person to where they recognize, all right, this person isn't just reading off of a page. See, folks, there's something strange about the Bible. You start off reading the Bible, but Hebrews 4.12 says that it is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword able to divide soul and spirit, bone and marrow. See, something happens when the word gets a hold of you. It starts reading you. It starts changing you. It starts empowering you. But every person in this room, you have a reason to exist. There is a reason that you are here. We are on a journey. And believe it or not, folks, we're making progress. But the gospel is the same today as it was in Acts chapter 2. It's the same today. It is still the sozo, the Greek word sozo, which means God saves you spirit, soul, and body. We believe that Jesus doesn't just save your soul, but he is redeeming your earthly body. Do you have sickness in your body? The Bible says the power of God unto salvation, sozo, your whole body, to the Jew first and also the Gentile. Why do you think the Bible says that Jesus went about doing good in Acts chapter 10, and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. How many times do you see in, not the book of Acts, but the gospels where Jesus went around and healed people, and then you see in the book of Acts where the church went around and did the same thing. What happened? See, the church got divided. It started in Acts chapter 6, and it deteriorated from there. And I'm here to say the church is coming back together. God is putting it back together, and we are going to be able to see What has only been read about. So why am I so stuck on this? Pastor, why are you so repetitive? We get it. Romans 10, 17. It says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. See, the fact is, if you want to see something happen... You have to hear it. So my job is not just to preach, but to preach what I want to see. And it's not just my job to reach the lost. In fact, it's my job to equip you to reach the lost. 
And one way to equip you is to remind you through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be effective. Ephesians 4, starting with verse 11, it says, And God gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, pastors, and teachers, to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. So here's my concluding thought here. The baptism in the Holy Spirit was and is still the key component to reaching the lost. He said, you will receive power if the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses. Do you want to be, do, you want to, do, do we want to reach Spanish-speaking people? We need more than translation. We need the power. Amen? Do you want to reach people that are dying on drugs? Do you want to reach people that are on stage four cancer? Do you want to reach people that are in such a place of hopelessness that they're to the point of suicide and don't see any way out? We need more than cute words. See, Paul said, I do not come to you with eloquent words, but I come to you with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. So I'm going to ask everybody to stand. This is our chance. This is our opportunity. This is our day. Something very interesting I want to point out to you. This November will be the 60th anniversary of our church. Six is the number of man. But we are moving into our seventh decade as a congregation. And seven is the number of divine completion. And I believe what has been sown for 60 years into this city with the founders of this church to this day, we are going to see a jubilee harvest like never before. The seeds that have been planted and watered for 60 years are beginning to push through that dry soil and the water of the Holy Spirit is beginning to pour out and we're beginning to see buds and we're beginning to see flowers bloom and we're gonna see those flowers become fruit. Today is the day, this is the season, now is the time. Will we be found all together? Will we be found in more than just one place? Will we be in one accord? Because I'm here to tell you, God has the gauze and the ace bandage. And he is ready to put the pipe back together so that the water can make it in full pressure and power to the end. So many churches are preaching the gospel and they're powerless due to their own division, their own frustration, their own political affiliations, their own hatred for another person they haven't even met. And that exists within the walls of the church. We ain't even talking about outside. Once we get to a place where those things take a back seat, where those things are left in the car in the parking lot, or left at the house, and we say, Lord, I don't care. I don't care. That's all I want is one person to come to know you. That's all I want is one man, one woman, one child, my son, my dad, my brother, my sister, my husband, my wife, Lord, whatever it takes. I don't care what it takes. I'll lay aside every difference. I'll lay aside every preference. I will give everything I've got to be who you've called me to be because Lakeside is my home. This is my city. This is where I belong. This is my destiny. This is my purpose. And I'm going to reach out with all that I am. Folks, we've got to get to that place. We've got to get to that place. So what do we do? This is what I'm asking us all to do. You can carry your political affiliations. And it's okay. You can carry your preferences. And it's okay. We're all different. We're all very unique. What makes it so cool when we come together? 
what are we going to do? Number one, we're going to seek God with all our hearts. Can we make that agreement? We're going to seek God with all that we are. We're going to lay aside everything else. We're going to take up our cross and we're going to say, God, I give you everything. I give you all that I am. Number two, we will partner with God in all that we do. God, I am going to hitch my wagon to you and you get to pull. I get to follow. Whatever you say, that's what goes. Whatever you say, that's what goes. No matter what it is, Lord, I will do what you tell me to do. Even if I don't like it, I'll do it. Do you know how many things God tells me to do that I don't like? Number three, we will expect God to respond. So in other words, God, if I worship you with all that I am and give you all in my heart and I partner with you, then you have no choice but to help me. That is how God is wired. That's what he's made of. He's made of the stuff that can't help but respond. You let one of your kids cry out in the crowd. You will knock grandmas out of the way to get to your child. Because that's how you're wired as a parent. I don't care if your child is 5 or 55. When your kid needs you, you respond because that's how parents are wired. And God is a good, good daddy. We start off singing that. We will seek God with all our hearts. We will partner with God in all that we do. We will expect Him to respond and we will be faithful in the process. Faithful even when I don't see the results. Go to Galatians 6, 9. I skipped it earlier. It says, and let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, we'll reap if we don't give up. And folks, I'm telling you, harvest time's coming. Because here's what God will do to a pipe that refuses to heal. The Bible says he prunes. John chapter 15. So he will put another piece in. And that piece is place. And it will provide the healing. And that means, and as your shepherd, that is an acceptable thing. We are here together in this place for a reason. And I am thankful that God saw fit to pull me out of a life of addiction, to drag me out of a life of drugs and alcohol and sexual sin, and lead me to a man that believed in the message that I'm preaching. It transformed my life. That's why I'm standing here today. In July of 1995, I gave my life to Christ and there's been no looking back. If you'll put those four things back up there. Folks, this is real simple. This is real simple. If we can agree to these four things, then I believe that God can provide the healing necessary the brokenness that's in all of us and I believe that he will bring wholeness we'll seek God with all our hearts we'll partner him in all that we do that means when I go to work Colossians 3.23 whatever you do do it heartily as unto the Lord not unto men I expect God to respond I'm not going to grow weary in the process. So I'm going to ask if you all would join me up here. Now I'm going to say this. Somebody lied to me. Somebody told me ministry was easy. I had no idea what I was getting into. But now, here I am. Not only these eyes, but these eyes open. And I still embrace the call. I still walk in first and unafraid. 
asking God to use me. And if I have to grab the ace bandage and get to work, not only on the outside, but the inside, then that's what I'll do. I love every person in this room. Not equally, because this one's my favorite. I was pointing to her. You're, you're all right, brother. You're all right. But I was pointing to this one. But I love every one of you. And here's the thing we got work to do, we got a community to win. And we got to come together, all together and all in one place. And that's where I'm at today. I'm willing to do whatever it takes in order to make that happen. If it requires extra time for some of you, then I'm willing to do it. In case you've not heard it before, I work here. All of you have my cell phone number. I think maybe it's even in the bulletin. So call me. Work it out if there's some issues. But none of those issues are worth the mission. So Father, thank you. That Lord, we can have Acts 2 power once we attain Acts 2 unity. Lord, help us. Help me. Help me to foster that. Help me to recognize my own preferences and the things that I desire and to set them aside. Lord, bless this food bank. There are so many people in that line that need more than just a nice speech. They need to see the power of God at work in their lives. Hallelujah. If it's all the same, I'm going to save the missions offering for next week. It'll be Kids Sunday, so the kids will be back in here. Um, because I just want to give opportunity for the worship team to come back up and folks if there are any of you that have to leave please don't think anyone will consider you any less spiritual if you do but I want to minister to the Lord for a few minutes and if there's anybody here and, and you need prayer for any reason I'd love to, to minister to you as well God is good Amen. This Wednesday, you will notice that Beth and I are wearing these lovely shirts, Kids by the Lake. This Wednesday, we start a brand new ministry down in the lake house, which was formerly the Ranger Hut. Uh, we, we could use a few extra teachers, uh, but what are the ages? Preschool through fifth grade. So four years old to fifth grade. Uh, if you want your kid to be a part of that, uh, then please uh, get them registered. I think if you registered before, you already get a free t-shirt. Uh, is that still the case? She still has some extra t-shirts. If you go ahead and get them registered today, we can get you a free t-shirt like this. We'd love your kids to be a part of it. Are y'all with me today? Are, are, are you sensing the urgency and the seriousness of, of this moment? We've been here for 60 years and this church has seen some wonderful things and this church has seen some hard things. We're moving into that seven. Hallelujah. So just play what's ever on your heart. We're going to worship together, and this concludes what I'm going to do. So you can dismiss yourselves as you feel free, and you can stay as long as you want. Yes, sir. Sure. First week, you get to say something. After that, we cut you off. This is Jason Coates. He gave, he gave his life to Jesus yesterday at a men's prayer gathering. I've never had that happen before. Uh, like he said, I, I gave my life to Christ yesterday. But I, mean, I met them on the square a few weeks ago. I was lost. I was so broken that just a few days ago, I was in the ICU. I had attempted suicide. I was unresponsive. I was let out of the hospital on Friday, and I felt the urge to 
message Jake there and see if they were doing anything that day. He told me no, he said, but I can pick you up for a prayer meeting tomorrow morning. I gave my life to Christ and I, I feel more complete than I ever have. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Just, just bring the wife. Is it okay that the Lord has given me a prophetic word for these two? I'm going to ask some ministers to gather around. I just want you all to face me so I can talk to you. Do you remember when you sang? Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And see, you are no longer a wretch. You are now a child of God. And the enemy is going to try to rob you of, what the, of the work God has done in you. And he is going to try to convince you that it was fake. He's going to try to convince you that um, these drugs and these things are going to try to creep back into your life. He's going to try to discourage you. But I'm here to tell you, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Remember yesterday when I told you that you don't do this on your own anymore, that you have the help, the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Well, see, there's even more than that. See, in Acts chapter 2, it says they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I don't know your position on all these things. I don't know what you know about all these things. I don't know how much of the, the, the word that you have an understanding of. I know yesterday you said you hadn't read a whole lot of it. But remember when I told you to start in John? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to tell you to start in Acts. Because I want you to see your future. I want you to see what God can do through you. Because there are a circle of people around you that need the same hope that you picked up yesterday. Now, I'm telling you, you're going to have to surround yourself with, with, with people that are going to encourage you. In the beginning, that's difficult, I know. I remember when I got delivered. Now, when I got saved, I got delivered. Drugs, alcohol, all gone. Gone. The desire, the taste, gone. That's not been the same process for everybody, but I believe that that's going to be the process for you. I believe today when we pray for you, the, the desire for any of these things that have held you back are going to be gone in the name of Jesus because he is a working living breathing God and he can transform you from the inside out because see we can quit outwardly right how many of y'all quit habits dozens of times only to find yourself trapped right back in it but see when something happens on the inside that changes everything but see the enemy is going to try to convince you otherwise and every now and then those temptations may try to come back, but you're bigger. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So surround yourself with people. You know those men that you prayed with yesterday? Hit them up on Facebook. Andrew Willis. He's on Facebook. I hit you up yesterday. Message us. Get together with folks. We get together on Wednesdays. Get your kids and kids by the lake and fellowship with us. Uh, pray with us. Join us in, in, in the difficult times. Yep, tonight at the pavilion, yes. Also, we have a U30 ministry. And this guy happens to run that. Everything that you can do, do it. To get yourself encouraged, to keep yourself fueled. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a brand new man. So you better hold on for the ride. Amen. When I got saved, it put me on a path. And I believe there's a ministry in your life that God wants to utilize. And I don't know what it is. I'm not saying you're called to be a pastor. I'm not saying you're, not, I'm just saying that you have a function on this planet. And you've not been living in that function, but God is transforming you into that. The Bible says we're being transformed in His image each day. So you hang in there. But see, you did something. You got up here and you proclaimed before this congregation that Jesus would save you. So the enemy... He's waiting in the back alley. But I got news for him. Big brother's living inside of you. And you got the power to knock him on his back now. 
and you got the support of a congregation that's willing to help. So if you find yourself struggling, if you find yourself, then you reach out to somebody. You hear me? You reach out to somebody and you hang on with everything you have and you're going to get stronger every day. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up Jason and Savannah. I lift up his children. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that as, as he begins to walk out this new walk, as he begins to live this new life, that the work that you are doing in him would become so real that people around him would see it. Just like my friends, when they said, oh, it won't last. He'll be back doing drugs with us in no time. And then it didn't work because I stayed away. The same is going to happen in his life. Lord, all the destructive decisions that have been made are being reversed right now. You're beginning a new thing in his life. And Lord, there's, there's some time that this is going to take. But as he is faithful to fight the good fight, to keep the faith, to finish the race, Lord, you are going to do the work that he can't do. So Lord, right now, we thank you for Jason. We thank you for the work that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey. Can you all come back tonight for the home fellowship? Can I baptize you tonight? All right. Hallelujah. We would love to see all of you tonight at the pavilion, 6 o'clock. God bless you. Lord, I see your glory.
Señor miro tu gloria is Lord I see your glory in Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Well, he did say in Spanish this time right before he did it. So. 